Oh shit, we are masters of YouTube. Welcome to Mastered Bowl of Dude Soup. Uh, second you eat it, you know exactly what you're doing. I'm your host, Lawrence Sontag, and I'm joined by many fine, uh, dude- duders? No, we're not gonna do that. Hello, James, how are you? Hi, I'm well. I'm also joined by Elise, hello. Hi. And Adam. Good to be here on the show. A new, perhaps a new house owner, and Bruce. Hello. Hello, Bruce. How are Adam, you? how's the house going? House is going good. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. I don't want to jinx it, man. <laughs> we'll know soon, right? You're getting power washed? What was we, that all about? Can you turn off the music? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's distracting me. <laughs> it's terrible. It's, just it's not the same. music. You called it music, but it's not. Yeah. No, it's just, yeah. no, it's it's just, just someone getting closer frequency and further away from the, the best we part we is we Lawrence we doesn't hear it because that's always playing. Yeah. yeah. I admire like your passion for it, Lawrence. Yeah. You can also hate his passion, though. Um... Yeah, no, when we did Let's Play Live, I had a in-depth discussion with uh, both Jack and Jeff about the home buying experience. Mm -hmm. And one of the, the words of wisdom that Jeff gave me that I'll never forget is, no one has ever bought a house and had it be easy. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, that's a good point. So I'm now uh, going through what I'm sure every adult has gone through. You bought a house in Texas, I'm yeah, sure. that was actually pretty easy. Uh, never mind. <laughs> yeah. Well, this one has just been like, so like typically what I've learned is like, I've lived in apartments my whole life and it's always, all right, fill out this credit check and you can move in next week. And it's usually pretty yeah. simple. This one's like, all right, fill out this credit check. And now here's a Bible I need you to fill out. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're going to be constantly getting inspection reports. And then we had this whole weekend where we're going back and forth with the current owners about just cleaning a sewer pipe. I want to. I just want to say crazy. real quick, real quick, before we go too far into this, we don't want to go full blown Rooster Teeth podcast. Yeah, we're not going any further. <laughs> I, I was <laughs> thinking about this yesterday because I'm like, I know Lawrence is going to ask me about yeah. The home buying yeah. experience. I'm like, I think our viewers are actually associated with this more than sure. us being like, man, I was living in my one bedroom apartment in downtown LA and boy, was it yeah, great. But I that's, admired your maybe. passion. That's exactly, Thank you. That's, 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 exactly, what, that's yeah. exactly what the Rooster Teeth podcast maybe. thinks. That they're talking to the little man, well, I, which is why we should talk about something more relatable, really like point. my front of the line passes. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have I a, like they're now your passes. James is like Friday. He's like, I, I got you a birthday present because my birthday was like Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And nothing really. We didn't do anything, and then oh. you gave me a DVD. I don't know how I feel about you <laughs> lying about the scenario, just and and using it to shit on me. Anyway, <laughs> and then he was like, he was like, a uh, surprise, yes, like we're gonna go to That's Universal. Good. Remember uh, when Homer bought Marge a bowling ball? Yeah, for so his birthday. Her and we then, have a, guys, we have a headline to justify. I'm I'm so <sighs> sorry. Uh, we got a YouTube title, and boy, those people are going to get irate. Oh yeah, I already made the thumbnail, so we should do. Yeah, that. Exactly. you did. Actually, I'm talking about his house for 45 minutes. <laughs> You admire his passion. It's been 45 yeah. minutes already? Jeez. If you sounded a little more passionate, maybe it'd be okay. Waterworld stunt show. That's the one thing I don't admire about you is your lack of passion. But James, good job. Good job on being passionate about going to mm. Universal. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, but you know what else gamers are passionate about? Far Cry uh, 5. Yeah. Well, I was going to say game titles with a slightly bigger number on the end. Oh. At least if you're a little more passionate. Than me. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, Far Cry 5 is apparently a thing. Um, mm. So it was, uh, this is all kind of adding up because somebody tweeted out that, like an analyst, basically did his analyst magic and said that Ubisoft had three unannounced AAAs. One's probably Assassin's Creed. It's looking like Far Cry 5 is another one. Wait, is this point. Far Cry 5? No, this is another fan-made trailer for Far Cry 5. Damn it, Lawrence, keep trying to fool me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean, know there's dinosaurs. What's happening? I, know, I was like, yeah, are there dinosaurs? The Shadow Run. Is this from that VR game? Primal? No. no. I think it's just Far Cry Primal. Wait, oh, no. Okay. no, there were no, no. dinosaurs. No, there were, you're right, never mind. There was you, like that you, historically accurate. Egg. There's is that the VR game that came out from Cryotech or someone last year. What is this? Maybe. Uh, no one cares about VR, sadly. Is this uh, Peter Jackson Presents it's King a family Kong trailer the Video Game? I actually by did Ubisoft? this in the Universal tram, uh, the studio tour um, that we got on. <laughs> did you do the King Kong? Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> King Kong 360, no. get it right. Uh, yeah, okay, guys. Right. Right. Sure. Right. Guys, I got, a bit of a, I got a bit of an internet mystery to piece together for you bit by bit okay. as to the setting of Far Cry 5. Yeah. It's funny how the setting is like as much of a character in video games now as anything else. Yeah, you know, like Seth's Creed, where is it? That's it is, the big it is in movies, too. Well, yeah. especially oh, yeah. when you have a game that you've already made and sold a hundred times. That's yeah. true. The only thing yeah. you really can change is the setting. First it was uh, Exotic Island, then Africa, then a jungle, and then the Himalayas. Now, <laughs> hey, you, skip, Himalaya, you skipped uh, Blood Dragon. Dragon. Primal. Primal I'm only going, I'm only going with the numbers, man. What about Blood Dragon? He was going in order. No, yeah. No, so it well, looks like number five may be in spaghetti western 19th century America. That's Far Cry awesome. Dust? Oof, maybe. It will be after Red Dead 2 comes out, you know what I mean? Hey, say, is it capitalizing on the resurgence of Red Dead? So, I yes would, and no. because that's uh, a happy coincidence. The Yeah, I think it's more of a coincidence. So the uh, the first... 
in retrospect now, this is being linked to this story. This was in May 1st, 2015. Uh, Ubisoft sent out a poll about future Far Cry games asking which setting people would like. Among the choices, we have uh, a game in remote Alaska about surviving extreme wilderness. Game Boring. in a futuristic sci-fi setting on another planet. <laughs> Lame. Game set in the Vietnam War during the 1960s. Okay. That could be cool. <laughs> Game set in the cocaine trafficking jungles of Peru. Dumb. Game where you can fight against or join vampires. So, oh, okay. My gosh, These are all Far Cries, by the way. Okay. Thank Man. God, no. Uh, and then Buried in the Middle, a Far Cry game in the spaghetti western style set in the 19th century America. Yeah. Where's Far Cry oh. Samurai? Far Woo. I do the Vietnamese or the vampires. Oh, hold on. Far Cry Samurai. How about Vietnamese vampires? There are other ones. Of that. <laughs> I guess the name means nothing. Next gen most. No, they can do whatever oh, they want. That's true. Yeah. Why not? Anticipated upcoming game. It's a Far Cry from. The original. Oh, there it is. Hey, oh, I guess sure. Anticipated games. Why not? What? Um, no. so there were a com- couple other ones. Blood Dragon Two, just a sequel to Blood Dragon with more Rex Power Cult. Um, this is Death Stranding. Yeah. No, yeah. this is just a different video I clicked on. Far oh. Cry Metal Gear. Yeah, uh, sure. Far Cry game set in Mad Max style post apocalyptic world. Christ. Far Cry game set in present day on a Jurassic Park style island of dinosaurs. That sounds cool. Uh, and uh, Far Cry game based on the world of Shangri La from Far Cry Four. So these were the options essentially thrown out in a poll that went out two years ago. Um, now, who won? Here's the big wraparound. We know here it is. One. Here's oh. the big circle right here. Uh, recently, in a post on the Great Falls Tribune, um, basically they they wrote up a story about how there's a film crew in Poplar, uh, in Montana, to film scenes for a video game. They didn't specify which game, um, but they cited a producer whose name is. Uh, French. Jeff Guillot. Yeah. yeah, there it is. That's oh, I moused over an ad on this website. Sorry, They're telling me about <laughs> cheap air travel. Fucking websites, man. Uh, I don't agree with <laughs> with the ad block. Fucking but. websites. I know. <laughs> I know. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. Continue. Continue. Uh, you so guys yeah. hear about these websites? Old man Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> sounds in their pictures. Sipping your tea on the porch. Oh, I can't sip tea. I got my teeth white. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyways, continue well, on Far Cry. We're we YouTube weekend, channel Funhouse. Jeez. <laughs> Uh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> so Jeff Guillaume, uh, who uh, was producing the shoots that they were doing, uh, which at this point may be for a trailer, like an E3 trailer or something like that, uh, he said, uh, this is a sequel to an existing global franchise. It's a quote. Um, basically, that's all he had to say about it. Uh, did not say that he was working for Ubisoft, but somebody else connected those particular dots. Uh, WCCF Tech. Uh, wrote that, quote, it should be noted that Gio has previously worked with Ubisoft to produce a live, live action trailer for Far Cry Primal. So we have we have the possibility of Far Cry being set in Spaghetti Western America. We have live action being shot with a producer who has worked with Ubisoft in the past on Far Cry trailers, shooting live action stuff in like an old 19th century uh, church in Montana. And then uh, Jason Schreer of Kotaku uh ominously replied to the NeoGAF thread about it and just said, you guys are good, exclamation point. So it's possible that he has interior knowledge about it and mm. can't confirm it or doesn't want to speak to it. Mm. But yeah, all indications point to Far Cry 5, mm. announced at E3, spaghetti Western setting. Cool. Yeehaw. Could be cool. Certainly so. the, uh, the open, setting Open is, world. Yeah. First person shooter. Why not? I think Americans are falling in love with the Old West all over again after the hit movie Cowboys vs. Aliens. <laughs> the Bad Batch. Right. I, oh, I'm sorry, The Bad Batch. You know, you're right. It was The Bad Batch. Is it called The, the Bad Batch? No, is this the Wild Magnificent, Bunch the Seven? Magnificent Seven? The Magnificent Seven, but The Bad Batch, Seven. she's thinking of another movie. That, of that was just I, in the desert. But it was just in the desert. No, I don't think it was a Western. Uh, True Grit. Western. True Grit rentals are through the roof. I mean, West, Tomahawk. This week. Westerns have been big movies for a very long time. And I think they probably always will be. It's like a... It's a yeah. It's like pirate about. movies. So. Yeah. Yeah. They're like yeah. pirate movies. Exactly. If you, if you take five years off, you get tired. Because right now, what have we been? We've been hammered with superhero yeah. movies for yes, the past. Genre. And that's just not going anywhere. And so people, they go, it's peaks and valleys. They're like, okay, I've had enough of this. Now I need a, I need some escapism or I need a, I need reality. That's, that's what it is. Can't we're, do too much. That's why we're all excited about World War II. You need escapism or reality. One or the other. Well, well, I'm just saying. It oscillates. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, like, it's all escapism, but it's like, I want something gritty. I want something lighthearted. Yeah. You know, I think Westerns flourished during the Depression because people wanted to hearken back to simpler pioneer times of Hmm. America. And now it's the same. Everything's so (laughs) complex with all these front of line passes and teeth whitening. See, I don't don't know, though. I wonder. You're I, right. Westworld is popular right now. <laughs> to me, Westerns, they were, I feel like post-apocalypse replaced Western in a weird way. Or at least they have a lot in common of the, 
here's an untamed land where it's it's asking questions about the civility sure. of mankind. But also ultimately, I mean, some are about how, oh, with your own two hands and your own two ingenuity, you can solve any problem and you can do it in any way you choose. I feel like that kind of narrative appeals to some people. I don't know that Western styling uh, is that all that appealing to the millennial generation, of which I consider myself a half resident of. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. It's uh, I mean, Red yeah, Dead did very well. I mean, that certainly punctured the the millennial mind space, and I love saying those phrases. Wow. Um, yeah, punctured the millennial mind space. I'm working on becoming an analyst. Good for you. I want all I want to do is We're write down some there. like really. <laughs> I want to. I want to write down a part. paragraph full of eloquent phrases and send it out in an email chain once a month. That'll be my job. Can it penetrate the millennial mind space? I, I know no other self-hating millennial as self-hating as you. <laughs> with it, that's oh, really please. what it amounts to. There are some. There are some that are probably far more self-hating. Can I ask I. you a far question? Please. Um, Is that like a C? Uh, yeah. Far question. Do the do the games <laughs> link in any way? Or do they have any? Like like the Tarantino universe where there are soft no. connections. Uh, maybe there's got to be right. There are some in jokes in some Far Cry games referencing other Far Cry games. They had a real miss opportunity in Far Cry Three. They there's did. A, there's a part where your character gets, I think, his finger chopped off, which is the same one like the assassins would. And it would have been like, oh, cool. It would have been cool if like there was an assassin blade that you find on the island or something like that. But no, no, there's not a lease. <laughs> but no, <laughs> unofficial gameplay trailer. Whoops. Whoa. Wow. How did you do that? Hyper on Zoom. God, these websites. Laptop and website. <laughs> <laughs> pad. Give him a mouse. Yeah, I know. There we go. Unofficial game. Why does trailer. my mouse have more than one button? That's the one we want. It only needs one. Back up to the right. <laughs> I think at least you were asking though, what ties the Far Cry games together? Yeah. Or yeah. Is there anything? There's there are Name. thematic there are thematic there elements. Are. It's it's, a, it's about like island survival. Mm -hmm. That's at least what. That's what the the first game and the movie have in common. Isn't, isn't it? Yes, I've seen the movie. Like there is some sort of guest to this world. It's generally some sort of outsider yeah. who penetrates this this world and then becomes the hero of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the the world always has elements of uh, of like choice. It, well, choice, sure, but it's, like, it's more like kind of what I was alluding to in the Western stuff. There, that it's like the rules of civilization don't quite apply here. And then it's all about okay, what do people do when when the template has been erased? So it's all and like Far Cry Two is about factions and how friendship only meant so much, and they eventually forced you to sort of betray characters that you consider to be friends and things like that. Mm -hmm. Basically, like State of Nature, Heart of Darkness type stuff. And then Far Cry Three hit that a little bit. Um, some of the some of the some of the more flouncy bloggers at the time insisted that it was a critique of of like the white savior complex. Which critique may be a little hard because it certainly was that and it had moments of self awareness, but um, so it was it, yeah it was a lot like uh, kind of like what James was saying it was a, here's an outsider thrust into this world who has to both learn the rules so like you as a video game player kind of learning the rules of the world like, along the character I didn't play a whole lot of Far Cry Four I, I, I got pretty it. tired of the form, formula by that point yeah. it, it was more or less a reskin of Three which I guess is maybe a disservice to all the people who worked really hard on it but. It felt a lot like three, which isn't bad. I thought three yeah. was a pretty near perfect game. Um, it got repetitive at points. I had that Ubisoft kind of formula, but um, it's it's just like open world, go crazy, have fun. You know, strap some dynamite to an ATV, roll it in, blow up a bear cage, and just watch the madness ensue. And then you know, take up people bows and arrows. It's, it's fucking rad. It's funny to. It's a good time to be uh, someone who likes video games because you can be spoiled by something where like the whole premise is like go anywhere, do anything. You know, blow up anyone, live, fight the way you want to fight, and you're like, oh, that's so boring. You know, like, <laughs> like that's how I felt playing Far Cry Four. I, I feel like I missed that on Primal too, because the the gameplay that you guys did for the channel, I wasn't here for, and it seemed really cool. It seemed like it was. I don't. I, yeah, I know. And that's kind of everybody got kind of like eh, the shrugged. I, I, I don't care about spear throwing or anything like that. I like if you a, if you remove the elements of it, I'm like, eh, no I, I thought it was a neat take on something that I hadn't seen before, which is like basically being a caveman, which I hadn't seen very often in other video games. And uh, and obviously oh. I trust Far Cry to do it pretty well. Sometimes so. I wonder if sandbox games are the equivalent of a child with a really active imagination that's able to take a stick and like turn it into a sword and make it fun. Whereas with sandbox, it's, it's really reliant on sometimes the player's imagination and ability to create fun scenarios for themselves. Yeah. Like when you guys play games and you just go in and you dick around and make create your own fun, create your own scenarios. Achievement Hunter does that a lot as well. Mm. That's kind of how Sandbox is for me, personally. There, there's a real art to it, though, I think, um, like you guys, and I guess we've all discovered with Zelda, <clears throat> is that Zelda feels like a sandbox, but 
it's re- it's a restricted sandbox, um, and the the game just ends up being endlessly fun. But where like James and I always talk about Assassin's Creed uh, Black Flag, where like I I loved the pirate aspect and the boat aspect. As soon as you get out on the ocean, it was amazing. But then after about an hour of that, you're like, I don't really want to like go whaling and then hunt for treasure and do all this. Like there's just too many things to do. It's too directionless. Almost. Yeah, and I was like, I, I just felt too distracted, and then, and therefore I just I uninvested myself entirely. So there's a there's a real art to that to trying to figure out how how much open world to give the player. But yeah. I mm-hmm. a trend that I've seen re- recently, and I really hope this that this extends to Ubisoft open world games because the problem I've always had with their games in particular uh, is that. The, the side challenges themselves are not challenging. They're a diversion. Um, and not that I need them to be challenging, but there's really not much of a reason to do more than one. Because once you do one, then you've basically done them all. They just rearranged. Like in Assassin's Creed 4, when you go diving for treasure, it's like, okay, this one has more sharks in it. But mm-hmm. they're not interesting. It's just like cone vision thing. You solve it immediately. So it, you're just basically doing the, going through the same paces over and over again in slightly different ways. Mm. Um, Describing a video game? Yeah, no, exactly. Exactly. Which is not a problem unto itself. But the problem was then, okay, so if you're not having fun doing it, and then for doing it, you get a reward that doesn't really impact anything. You get like four bales of wheat or something like that that <laughs> plays into a much more larger complicated system that doesn't really pay off in anything other than you get a black suit instead of a white one. Hmm. You get ships and then you can send those ships out using the like mobile app. And yeah. it was like a mini game. That was actually kind of a fun distraction. It was a fun distraction, but again, didn't pay off in much. No. Uh, it, I think that's what it comes down to is now how much do you like the characters and or the story, yeah. which is like kind of the big reason. Um, well, I think there's I, a better way. Well, yeah, I mean, like I immediately got into uh, Prey this weekend because the game just like it has a bit of an opening and then it's just like, just go. There's no cut scene. Mm-hmm. It's just it felt very Half-Life. It was like just you're in the world. Here it is. There's kind of like a twist in the very beginning that kind of like punches you in the nuts. And then you go, all right, you're in the world. Have fun. Explore. And I was like, thank you. This is a game that I can play because I'm not going to keep running into a roadblock of a cutscene every five seconds. And that's what Assassin's Creed has become. Oh, yeah. And Far Cry does that a little bit. You'll go up and do a hut, and the dude will talk to you. Um, but you can usually skip those, and it sometimes doesn't really matter. But sometimes you'll miss boobs. Yeah. So you don't want to miss those. <laughs> that's scary. I guess for me, the, 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 the trend that I've seen lately, which is in Zelda and also in like Final Fantasy 15, is that there are a number of just like side elements, but they all tie back into the main game and the main game experience in a very fundamental way. <clears throat> so in 15, you can do some side bullshit and you might get gear or money, which is pretty scarce or like get ingredients for cooking. And then you can do the cooking, which is a weird payoff into itself because there's like a pornographic high image or high resolution picture of just a plate of food, which is appealing to look at. It's a fun reward. And then you also get stat boosts and stuff, which is important because the game's actually hard. So all of these things tie together to make meaning as opposed to just a whole map full of stuff. You can do, but like you get, you might get some clothes for it. If if I feel like if the the end game goal is just to have a higher number in terms of statistic, it's never worth it for me. What I liked about the early Assassin's Creed games, two especially, was that like it's like if you get all the stuff, we're gonna give you this awesome suit of armor. It doesn't necessarily change. It, it'll give you maybe more like life ticks or whatever, but like. It still feels like you're gathering all the pieces or, or like that one thing where every single time you found a, a symbol, it would let you do a puzzle, which oh, then yeah. it would give you two seconds of a video. The riddle mm. thing. Yeah. Mm. And it was like, like even all that stuff is way more valuable to me than ever seeing something pop up that says you've collected two of whatever, you know? So like shrine hunting in Breath of the Wild, it isn't just so that way I can find all the shrines because I don't care about being a completionist. It's so that way I can tie that back into one having more fast travel points around the map and two, uh, trading those things in so that way I can get more hearts or more stamina, which Mm -hmm. then allow me to go to other places. And so to me, that's like what I really like about it. Um, I'm curious what you guys think um, they can do for the next Far Cry game to make it like more exciting. Different? Like what, what can you do in a Western world um, to make it like super... Cool. I guess for me, it's introduced gameplay scenarios that drive home the need for its own mechanics. And Far Cry 3 and 4, after a couple of upgrades, you're just an unstoppable killing machine. And unless you unless you run directly into a group of guys who are all shooting at you, you pretty much never die. Um, and that's fine. You know, that's a, that's a type of gameplay experience, but it kind of renders the rest of the tasks you have to do a little obsolete. I prefer the 
it to have, and it's hard to like. This is the hardest thing in the world, but to have a series of of like uh, min, or side quests that are needed and necessary because the main quest is is challenging mm -hmm. or optionally challenging. Like in Zelda, you can run into a Lionel, and you know, oh fuck, I cannot fight that now. Mm -hmm. But just the presence of it makes getting spirit orbs important because yeah. then you're like, oh, if I get enough hearts, then I can go back and kill that fucker. Yeah. Yeah. They do something like that in Far Cry's world where they intentionally drop in some hard things around you. Um, you can either beat it because you're skilled or every level up you have that in the back of your mind Like that's my end goal something that gives you a long-term goal beyond beating the game and getting 100% on stuff There's a, I think for me <clears throat> This assumes a lot Red Dead Redemption 2 is coming out this year. Yep. Is it this year? Um, and ideally that yeah. will be Far Cry will be uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, but first person hmm. um I bet Red Dead is going to have first person because I, yeah. GTA had it. It's funny that you say that because I, I was thinking exactly the same thing. Uh. Um, but Red Dead's probably going to do the open world a little better than than Far Cry does. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think the thing that Far Cry does well that maybe GTA and Red Dead don't do is the visceral experience of shooting Old West guns and like you know using your knife on dudes and that and that kind of thing. Like that ideally will feel a little more uh, rough and and like kind of angry like primal feels. Uh, so hopefully that's that's one way they'll delineate mm. between Red Dead and, and Far Cry. Well, even though like GTA has a first person mode, it doesn't feel like a first person shooter when you're in that. Not at all. Like compare yeah. like that compared to like Overwatch or Doom or something. That's like that's not a first person experience. Yeah. I don't know. No, you're right. What yeah. do you think, Elias? I think Far Cry could set itself apart from uh, Red Dead by just being a little bit more fantastical and over the top and less concerned with being realistic. If, for example, you have a pistol, but then it's just like a, it's got crazy number of barrels on it and it's just weird. Oh, I think mm. I think if they went a little bit more sensational, there's not I, I don't I don't know that they can necessarily compete with Red Dead when it where it comes to making a realistic Western. Yeah, like mm -hmm. an alternate universe almost. Yeah. But I think if they made it like that's why Blood Dragon so much fun is because it's so over the top. Yep. Um, and I know th they're two very different different games and play styles, but I think that if if they made a little bit more over the top, that could definitely make it worth playing if you're if you're planning to play both. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I think it like kind of kind of what you're saying, some of the most fun things about Far Cry are like riding on an riding an elephant through a like fortress or whatever and stomping through. But then you still need to get to the elephant. It's always it always takes me out of it when you can do that, and then you go to the next base, and then someone spies you from across the way because you weren't crouched into the hidden grass, yeah. you know, enough for you move too fast. It's like, but I mean, I just rode an elephant through this base. <laughs> like you're kind of giving me mixed signals in terms of tone and what you expect of me. Hmm. Um, Blood Dragon seemed like it was way more like we want you to blast your way through this whole game. And that was like a pretty consistent tone. Yeah, I know there's a difference because Blood, Blood Dragon was what? How long was that game? Like three hours. Three hours compared mm -hmm. to a game like this, a Far Cry full fully fledged game that they want you to spend like 50 hours in. I yeah. guess if there was more like Saints Row in Far Cry, mm -hmm. where they were like, we're just going to double down on. Yeah, it. I mean, it, it never. I don't feel like Far Cry ever takes itself too seriously. It's been getting more comical. Yeah, I guess yeah. the I guess uh, well, comical is not the right word. It seemed moment. There seemed like there were grand moments of self awareness in four with uh, pagan men. Like a lot of his a lot of his monologues seemed to be like, "Hey, you're the good you're the good guy. I'm the bad guy." But we're both in a video game, so let's just blow everything up. Basically. Like I appreciated that statement of a, like maybe not awareness is the wrong term, but at least they're being very upfront about what the game's about. Yeah. Breaking the fourth wall well, a bit. Yeah, U Ubisoft. I mean, they had no way of knowing when or where Red Dead Redemption would be coming out. Yeah, that's true. But mm -hmm. they, I'm, you know, everyone knows it was being worked on. Like, you could simply do the math and look at the, you know, the history of the release schedule. So they knew at some point, they're like, well, we're, we might compete. And this might work against them, might work for them if it does end up being a Western. But I don't know. They have, I think they have the unique angle of Red Dead. The, I don't, or do we know where it takes place? Is it before Red Dead Redemption or after? I haven't said a thing. That was all turn of the century. It was a really interesting time where yeah. it was, it was like the old world versus the new world. Like it was kind of a fun setting. Whereas with Far Cry, chances are just because of how much of the game revolves, all the past games are revolved around a bow and arrow. You're probably going to be like a like half Native American individual. Or they're going to do like a dances with wolves situation where oh, it's man. like yeah. you're going to be like a, a Civil War general or a officer that like turns or something like that. And you'll be doing like a lot of stealth missions. It doesn't really make sense for you to be a John Marston type character in this world. Cheers. 
here's what I wish, and this is this is not something. This is my my grand wish, that sometimes games like this, franchises like this, would start to buy licenses. Mm. So then they would do Far Cry Terminator. Okay. Oh, they and did, then you uh, would play as a soldier. They in, did Far like, Cry I, Avatar. What? What? They, Ubisoft made an Avatar game that was open world and basically the exact same formula as this. Oh. Like a first person Avatar game? It was third person. Was, oh, but, yeah. I remember the, the 3D game where you could like put on oh. your 3D glasses. Yeah, it wasn't that. Wait, wait, um, it might have been that. Actually, it was. was. Um, it may have been. Because <laughs> like, I, I feel like they should do, that That would be something that I would be more interested in. You want, What's like, the skins. big movie of the year? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. let me skin on some hmm. stuff. Yeah, James Cameron's Avatar the game, yeah. And you I guys had ever, like a 3D mode. Yeah. You ever played this on the channel? No. Maybe we should play it. Maybe we should. <laughs> I don't even yeah. know. This I knew. I, I knew this existed, I but I mean, this is like third person. Yeah. Yeah. I you're remember. a. You're an Ava man. Well, well, you can also play as a Nav. He doesn't imagine, say you need to be a Navi. I mean, imagine if the hub world. You know, you could you could go out and do missions as a soldier in first person, but then you could go and then go into your little chamber or whatever, and then you'd be your Navi running around in Navi world. So you're basically like one. It's kind of like AVP. You know, so, sometimes you're using automatic weapons right. and, and and gear like this, and then other times you're using spears and crazy bow and arrows and uh, acrobatics. Isn't, but, isn't a big advantage for video games, though, is typically is most games just rip off movies and do it for free? Yeah. Or like uh, like the freaking cover art for Metal Gear Solid is just oh, a shot Terminator. from Terminator? Or yeah. Is like, okay. But I mean, I feel like... Duke I feel Nukem like is just a rip off of every movie that's ever existed. Sometimes if you have the guidance of, well, that's because of they, a movie that we already know is good or... And that's back when games were swimming in the wake of other media. Now the situation's kind of reversed. Well, I think James, what James is getting at is something that like we all wish. Yeah. Which is because like Terminator or... Star Wars or whatever else, they were gonna, you know, they're gonna make their own video games. Like, we could do it better. Right. And they may not be able to. Yeah. Um, and so maybe they trust like a Far Cry or sure. an Assassin's like Creed. Far Cry Iron Man. Right. To like to yeah. handle their license. <laughs> yeah. That'd be really cool. Sure. I, I think know. that would that would maybe help help f- franchises like Far Cry, which insist on releasing a new game every single year, you know, um. feel a little bit more. It's like Fresh, a branding. as opposed to them going, what's another time period we can just switch it to? Yeah, yeah. I, I, that would be kind of fun. And then the problem is there's always going to be the, when is this going to tie into a movie? And that's that's sort of where the licensing nightmare kicks in. And having talked to developers about this before, where they're like, like we had nine months to make a game. Well, Most yeah. games no, get I, two and a half years. But, but I'm saying we don't need it. We just start from movies that already exist. Like you don't sure. need it. It doesn't have to be. And I know the whole media push and yep. mixed media. They want to make everything match, and it ultimately I, makes everything worse. But you just go now. So just I'm, do just do a Far Cry for Terminator One. Well, I remember. So I remember <laughs> back when I was at G Four, we were doing talent booking. They were asking like, "Oh, we need people." I was trying to get. I was asking about getting Brandon Ralph in because I was following the development of Superman Returns. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, I heard he lives in L.A. The movie wrap, like, probably a good time to get. Movie's not even close to coming out. Shouldn't even bother. And then. The minute the movie was like coming closer, like, can we get Brandon Roth? Why can't we get him? Why can't we get him? It's like it's all about timing. Mm-hmm. Um, so if like if all of a sudden someone right now goes, I want to make Terminator Two Far Cry, they're gonna go, but huh? Where's the money gonna come from? They're like yeah. uh, it's it's a weird thing where it's like if it's not currently on someone's mind, like right now, someone's well, probably like Far Cry Guardians of the Galaxy, like. Should have worked on that months ago, years I, ago. I think Telltale's been successful with yeah. that and doing like they Back to the Future quick. when yeah. it's like, well. Hmm. It's just a beloved franchise mm-hmm. and, and buying up those properties. Perfect. Is there a level it, in this where you slaughter Navi? Uh, <laughs> I hope so. I don't think you do, do you? I think you play sure as the Navi. So you, you play as the Navi at some point, and I know there's Navi. some sort of feature where it goes 3D. I've got something right, nearly as glasses. beloved as Back to the Future. Berries for your mom. Whoa. Oh. This podcast is sponsored by Sherry's Berries. Mother's Day is this weekend, which means you have just enough time to order a lovely treat for your mother give birth to you. They better do it like right now. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Hey, if you don't respect your mother, look up birthing videos. Do that and then think about your mom. We, uh, oh boy. You shouldn't do we that. We do not. And uh, then, uh, then maybe you'll respect what she did for you. <laughs> How many time? birthing videos All those have years you ago. seen? Like today. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I've not, I haven't seen a single one like the entirety of labor because that would be like six hours. But I've, I want to say in my entire life, I've seen maybe three babies squirt out of a... Isn't this an ad read? This is an ad read. So thank you, Sherry's Berries, for sponsoring this podcast. <laughs> um, all you have to do is pick your delivery date, and the berries are guaranteed to arrive fresh or delicious, or your money back. We have berries here for you now. Oh, you'll careful, notice careful, there's... Careful, careful. Yeah, there's... One's about to fall tip, over. Don't let them That white chocolate's out. getting a little loose there. You notice some are missing. That's odd. That's an odd thing. 
It's almost like we've had these berries for uh, under a week and Elise couldn't help herself. I couldn't help to, myself. I didn't know they were in the office. I had to be I snacking. Did. Well, there would be even more gone if, if it were made public. So that's just how delicious these are. They can't stay around. Um, Elise, soon to be mother, it, can't get enough of them. Do you need more of those? Yeah, can maybe we, we do them? need more Sherry's Berries. No, I was just like, can we eat those? Oh, yeah, you can, actually. <laughs> yeah. Eat them away from the mic, though, because maybe it might just be a pet peeve of mine, but man, people noshing on a mic is oh just the God. grossest sound. Right. So thank you, Sherry's Berries, yeah, for sponsoring. You can get an amazing berry really deal for just $19.99 by visiting berries.com. That's B-E-R-R-I-E-S dot com. And to get our special offer, you have to click on the orange microphone in the upper right and type in dude space soup. Uh, so that will get you a special offer. Uh, you can order your berries and have them arrive by Mother's Day, which is this coming Sunday. So please check that offer out. Once more, that's berries.com, B-E-R-R-I-E-S.com. Click on that mic and type in Dude Soup. So mm. thank you for your wonderful sponsorship and your wonderful berries, Cherry Berry. Mm. <laughs> Already spilling. See, that's why I waited. Mm. Yep. Gotta I be waited. careful. There's mm. a lot of, these, these berries are real big and there's a lot of chocolate on them. Let me take that one. No, I'm good. You're dripping. No, thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, I feel like at this point we've thoroughly justified the headlines. You guys can go back to talking sure? about Waterworld stunt show. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about your teeth whitening. Oh yeah, I got my teeth whitened. Every that man. Was <laughs> an unpleasant process. Yeah. I mean, I didn't think my teeth were that dark. How'd you do it? Did you go to the mall where they shine the thing in your face, or no? It was. Uh, I went. So I got. Mm -hmm. I got my teeth no, checked out by my yeah, dentist. Hold on later. Mm -hmm. And then. Um, hold on, hold on. Why did you do this? Because Bruce, it you put, be beautiful. You put the idea in my head. Yeah. Uh, I, put the, uh, I never told you your teeth were bad. No, you didn't. But I looked at myself in the mirror and I thought, could I exist in Riverdale? And the answer was no. I never ever said right. anything about you existing in Riverdale. But then uh -huh. I was thinking about it. You absolutely could not. Exactly. So <laughs> you have to be 20 years old and amazingly hot. <laughs> well, I can look we, like I'm 20 if I get my teeth whitened we and get Botox injected Bruce, in my face. So I get a timber of oh, Riverdale. Oh, that's right. We're gonna get you those veneers. Hello, fellow children. <laughs> those <Yeah>. giant veneers. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna get a spray tan. I'm gonna get my teeth whitened again because one is never enough. Uh, I'm gonna get hair plugs all the way down to my brow, Ooh. right here. Just have hair shooting out of my forehead to show how <laughs> young and virile I am. That's not what they have. Yeah, it's exactly what they have. And then I'm gonna get everything no. sucked out. Every bit of body fat I have, it's all gone. I nothing, want nothing, nothing more desperate than an old man trying to blend in with. <laughs> it's not desperate. It's cool. Young, yeah, there it is. I mean, you Does got this look like the face of a desperate person to you, Adam. So, so you oh. got the teeth whitening. You started the process. Yeah. What's, so you got the uh, teeth. Whitening. <laughs> I don't understand. It does make a difference. Yeah. I think. See, I look less hideous and more young. When am I? You're not a monster anymore. Yeah, right? I could live in a smoky uh, town with a bunch of sexy teenagers. You're going down a slippery slope, though. When does it end? When I'm young again. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. <laughs> what do you mean? My favorite Fuck thing off. sometimes, <laughs> if I can't sleep, is to look up celebrity veneers. Um, oh, yeah. I would, I'd love to get veneers. Yeah. Um, and you it, really it, got big God, it's a different. Yeah, it's, a, See, it's such if a anyone difference. needs them, I need them. See, you know, yeah, I need I need better it. teeth. Lawrence, what? did you notice an immediate difference immediate. in the whiteness of your teeth? I did. It was immediate. Or do you have to do several like sessions? They're like, well, we can get you one, through one phasing, oh, but those we are get, great teeth. Like several sessions. Look how much better their teeth are. Well, yeah, like, those are straightened though. Oh, they close whitening. The, they close the gap and oh, stuff. That's veneers. not fair. Oh, those are veneers. Oh, oh, don't yeah. don't <laughs> change yourself. So uh, <laughs> I'm absolutely going to change myself because I hate myself no. uh, into something that is young and beautiful in Riverdale. But then you're just going to look like everyone yeah, else. Yeah, they all look the same. They yeah, put this awesome. like they put this goo on my gums and then hardened it so the stuff wouldn't like burn my gums away because uh -huh. I guess it's like the equivalent of, of like liquid bleach or whatever. Uh -huh. Lawrence, I don't want you. Ah! To, I don't want you to Jennifer Gray yourself. Want get hot? Yeah, Matthew no. Broderick couldn't love her after she got a nose job and he crashed his so, car and those people. <laughs> she went from having a very unique look to kind of looking way more generic because mm -hmm. she got her oh, nose Oh, her, yeah. yeah. But it doesn't matter how you feel, Adam. It matters how she feels. Unemployed. Um, I, I through happenstance, <laughs> discovered that there's a website called realself.com, mm -hmm. which is Yelp for plastic surgery. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I was like, this is pretty fascinating. <laughs> Welcome to the Everyman podcast. Yeah. This is the LA podcast where we talk about making ourselves perfect. I love so I've never had by the I've machine. never had any major surgeries. Oh. I had my tonsils oh my removed, God. which I guess is like a weight creature. Loss. <laughs> I don't understand. Mm. Oh yeah, there's also this the gum reduction surgery where they yeah. uh, you got too, too they like much gums. burn away your gums. Lawrence, why don't you get why didn't you get veneers instead? Uh, that's coming. Because you, veneers, it's because, well, I'll tell you why, I'll thing. tell you yeah. why, it's because veneers cost a ton. Oh. So if you can salvage yeah. any of your actual teeth before they shave yeah. them down exactly. and then plug in fake ones, what? the better, but they can only put veneers in on a specific color. 
Thank you. So James. you need to get all the rest of your teeth to to the whiteness that you want your veneers to be, and then they can pop those veneers exactly. on because your veneers exactly. are gonna. Otherwise, you'll have two white teeth. Really. And then and yeah. then the rest will be all stained. So you got to stain. You got to get the stains out to the color you want, and then only replace the yeah, teeth. Yeah, because like maybe you only get like four veneers. Oh, so the veneers so then aren't they cheap. all have to match. Well, being a celebrity no. sucks. But it's it's also do awesome. veneers color over time, or do they? Or yeah. do the rest they of your do. teeth? They do. Yeah, so you have to yeah. get them replaced. It'll probably. stain naturally, so like it'll stain alongside the rest C of your teeth. Do they? Help, can you still chew with the same veracity? Yeah, the veneers. No. They're oh, no, 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 they're stronger. Yeah. because they're not stronger? attached to your nerves. Uh, but I don't know about that. if teeth. you get Botox in your jaw, then it all bets are off when it comes to chewing. Every what's, man, what's Botox in your well, jaw about? Uh, sometimes women, uh, like I have a, I have like a square jaw, and sometimes women get Botox in their jaw because it relaxes the muscles and then it elongates this oh. and and essentially reduces oh. the size of your jaw muscles but it also reduces the strength of your jaw muscles so oh. and you're so you chewing and applesauce and yeah, 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 you're just, yeah you just drool a little bit mm. whatever i'll take that's it. also great to look up we're not endorsing plastic surgery it'll make me young I, and beautiful i want a third leg to come out of the bottom of my <laughs> second the thing, leg though, they're showing a picture of him when I he's want, like 11 years yeah, old yeah, yeah. I no one has feet on my hands they've been doing a lot of that they've been doing a lot of that james and i noticed it too i think that's cheating but that's not fair. You can't show an 11 year old. Yeah. You show so, the difference between like a 32 year old and talks. a 35 year old. All and right. How much surgery? All right, Lawrence, real talk. Say we get into a Deus Ex type future where you have the option to chop your arm off to get a robot arm. Would you do it? Yeah. Would you willingly? Of course he would. He would. No, yeah, well, okay. I'm saying would. that's a silly there's, question there's, to ask him. Are you serious? I'm saying there's, <laughs> there's situations you can be in where you get into a car accident or something. And it's like, crap, we have to lose the arm. But you can give you a mechanical. Oh, thank God. Uh. Or there's the one guy who's like, give me that fucking robot arm now. Are you the give me the fucking robot arm guy now? Or you know you are, Lawrence. Are you willing to give up a piece of your own humanity to be fake? It's just meat. Is Adam. it humanity? See? I told um, you. That said, I probably wouldn't go out of my way to chop my own arm off. But what happens if like an accidentally a oh, truck yeah. fell on it or something? Please. You yeah. just robot. bungee jump more often? Yeah. Okay. That's that's how I invited on myself. Let me let me ask I you. I do this, very Adam, dangerous things with no training. Mr. Humanity. <laughs> you uh, you were born without a cell phone, but you carry one with you now. Yeah, it's an improvement on your life. It's not inside my dude. Body. Got him. But you can uh, remove top. it at any time you want. Yeah. What? I'm you can get, remove the arm. <laughs> That's the best thing about it. They're no, no. <laughs> if <laughs> here, and then you just set it down next to your night table. It'd be, you don't have an arm. It'd be like getting a, plug it in. It'd be like getting a Bluetooth headset installed in my ear. Cool. Yeah, That's actually pretty yeah. sweet. Do it. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. Because no one fucking uses Bluetooth headsets anymore. Guys, we can all... Didn't you use one at the gym today? We can put our differences For aside. For music only. With a selection from the Triple X novel. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Where did that come from? Shaking his head, Xander shrugged. He couldn't blame Shavers. Getting back on task, the agent pointed to other darts in the case. These red ones, tranquilizer, and blood splatter darts. All the appearances of a kill shot with no after effects. I call them the Lazarus Loads. Nope, hold on, we're not Why done. do we start reading this? Catchy name, Xander said, throwing the guy a bone. There was no reason to be nice, but there was something about Shavers that reminded Xander of the other guys he'd known growing up. Guys who hadn't made it out of the project because so they'd been too naive. Copyrighted. Nice. Shavers smiled like a little boy who'd just been rewarded. He waved towards the case. You've also got your exploding darts, your radio surveillance darts, and of course your regular forty-four caliber rounds if she'd ever want the real thing. He winked and nudged Xander conspiratorially. Wet work. You know what I'm talking about. Xander ignored the comment and took still the pistol recording. out. It's still going. I know. Is the show happening? Right <laughs> Holding now? the weapon out at arm's length, he discovered the weight was considerable. The pistol wasn't something he'd want to take out and wave around for a while. And the silver finish was more eye-catching than he would have liked, but the weapon felt solid and reliable in his fist. He expertly raised it and spun the cylinder. Knocked over a few 7-Elevens, have we? Shavers asked. Nah. Xander admitted, flipping the weapon cylinder back into place. I had my leg in a cast for three months. All I did was play first-person shooter video games. Not every stunt came off exactly right. His current situation in Prague was a prime is a, example. Is this of a that. romance novel? <laughs> I get it. It's May Sweeps Week. Yep. So mm. you're you got to bust out all the all the hot <laughs> trying segments. to get canceled. What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> you stopped our discussion for that? <laughs> yeah. So we could all experience a moment of togetherness. Oh. That was great. Thank you. You're was welcome. It? I admired your passion. Well, you know what? What else we can experience passion about? Is any games? Hold on. Let me put on my oh. hat. What? Okay, that's why you brought the hat. I brought it. Is this your indie games hat? It is. You're the <laughs> ringmaster. There's so much shit happening in this. I, I'm just, Omar, this you and I are Stockins? exactly confused in the same way. Are we watching Talkin' Stockins? No. Weird. Lisa and I are going to talk about indie games. It's Enel's Indie Corner. Roll the 
graphic. Yeah, roll that graphic. Do please. I have to be in this corner? Can we leave? <laughs> James is in between the E and L corner. I don't, this we is have never some, a corner I opted in for. We have some Heroes of the Storm matches to go lose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first up on this, this today's E and L indie corner. What remains of Vita Finch? Oh my God! What a great game. From Giant Sparrow and published by Annapurna Interactive. What a great game. What a great game. <laughs> All right, moving on. Oh wait, uh, wait, tell us why. At oh least. okay. Jeez. Hold on. Let me put I, here. Oh, hold on. Enel's any any corner should have a B in it because you guys should be convincing me how to why how I should be play playing it? these games. Uh, Bruce, that's not what indie games are about. Isn't this corner the game? They're not. This is the segment. The segment of of ENL's indie corner called Corner to Corner, exactly. which features B, <laughs> who uh, who he's in a different corner, and then he you need to convince B was. So tell me why I should play this. B game. can sit over there and be convinced if he wants to. I already know that our tastes are superior. I don't have to. Convince. I, no, just tell correct. me why. All well, right, fine. You know every other like narrative based adventure game that's essentially a walking simulator. Yes. This is not like that at all. This is a series of playable vignettes that that weave together in a tragic story about the Finch family. And I think that either you can relate to this on a personal level or you can f be fascinated as just a fly on the wall experiencing this family's story. Didn't they send you a bunch of free shirts and stuff? <laughs> After she played, so it, after though. I played, can you please she, after, can you please disclose <laughs> after she spent that you're giving free <laughs> advertising so, to a game that basically gave you gifts? Is it a you scary game? Fucking sellout. Is it a there scary are scary game? moments. There was one moment I had to get James to play because I got too scared. I played most of it. Um, I did receive a t-shirt gift basket. Uh, yes, a payout we call it. <laughs> um, Lobbyists because, uh, out there. I asked them if I was able to buy one of their shirts, mm -hmm. and they recognized my social clout. Ah, yes. And they said, "Money's no good here." Oh hey, yeah, Bernie yeah. Gus were available whenever. They don't sell those t-shirts. How many? Actually. How many hours does it take to play through? About three hours. three hours at the oh, most. Oh, that's it. Yeah, but I was. I spent a little longer because I. Uh, so, there is a uh, there is a tendency in games, and and games are getting a lot better about this, about creating spaces that tell a story just because of the space itself. What's in it? What's happened in it? Like you can kind of pick up on all those details. And what remains of Edith Finch is the best example I've seen so far of that. Hmm. Every room you go into, something happened in there. And at some points, it kind of knocks you over the head. Um, there was, there's one room in particular, I'm, I'm gonna stay away from spoilers, but essentially like there were two brothers living in one bedroom. One of the brothers died very young. So uh, you don't see that until later, but what you do see is like the heights by year. Mm -hmm. And one of them just stops and the other one keeps going. That's cool. It's cool and super sad because it's yeah. like in the same bedroom and you're like, holy yeah. fuck, that mm -hmm. other kid had to stay in this room? Well, like his brother had died over there and then his bed's just empty and the kid mm. kept growing. And there's a whole lot of moments that tell a whole story beyond what you see. And especially if you connect, connect the dots. So like you enter in through the garage of this house and there's like a calendar on the wall, except it's 2010 or sorry, 2016. So you're or 2017, something like that. It's 2010. Present that's right. Day. What kind of skins can you unlock for your characters? <laughs> um, <laughs> you actually do get skins. What? Them. They're loot boxes. There are no so, skins. Well, as Elise said, you, they're a playable. I don't vignettes. play games. There are the t-shirts they send on you, but that's it. <laughs> no. Oh, I mean, over time, you go back and play different characters, and then when you look down, you see a different character. So, fuck you. There are skins in the game. Yeah. <laughs> the, I just asked a real question. Well, you got a real answer. It's it also shit. the the game is is essentially vignettes where you're playing how each family member died, um, in their own you know, unique tragedies. It's like this family is cursed. And so the house is this crazy house where like there are rooms piled up to the sky and, and it's, it's really wonky. It feels like a Wes Anderson set, but it makes total sense because each family member's room was boarded off after they passed away. So it's like, it, I, I, th I thought it was fantastic. Elise, I'm going to need you to disclose that you were paid off by the company <laughs> every time you speak about it. I actually need to <laughs> look up a wiki for this or something because there are some things that I, at the end of it I was like. Didn't quite add up. But what? Not, not did it didn't add up. I just wasn't following it maybe close enough. There isn't a lot like, of detail in the is wiki. Is it only yet. on PS4? No. Yeah. It's on PC. Oh, it's maybe oh, PC too. Okay. I, yeah, I played on PS4. But uh, it's interesting too because Annapurna Interactive, who published the game, they are the gaming division of Annapurna Pictures, yeah. which was founded by Megan Ellison, who was the, she was an heiress who decided that she wanted to, to make films instead of like squandering her family's money being a socialite. She was like, I really love films. I want to make films. And so her Squander company, <laughs> <laughs> her company has produced like Sausage Party. Yeah. Um, oh, fuck. Fun House. There, there are a they, few other like horror, like horror films. They, they made Zero Dark Thirty. Um, Okay, all right, yeah. Because like I, I know the I've seen Bad it in Batch in front of a good, <laughs> in front of a few good movies, and I was like, oh, cool. Yeah, well, we gotta move on though. Next up on Anal's in the corner, Little Nightmares. Oh, okay, <laughs> moving on. Yep. We haven't finished this yet. 
because no one wants to hear about you this. You finish this? Did you finish this? No, uh, I played it just enough to kind of get the vibe of it. It's a, uh, it's your, it's a, it's a, your typical limbo. What kind yeah. of uh, orbs do you collect? Uh, there aren't orbs. There, <laughs> there are, are no little, orbs. There are little like scary figurines that you grab and throw yeah. and smash. All right, so uh, that's so you collect lantern, things. Not light. Oh wow, Tim Burton make this? I mean, it is. It is influenced. Yeah. Yes. I, for me, it's more like uh, since you, you travel through these rooms and it's all like this cutaway diorama type mm -hmm. thing. It reminds me a lot of illustrations that might accompany like scary stories to tell in the dark or something like that. Something that's just on the edge of being disturbing, like too disturbing for a kid, but not quite. I, I need someone to just compile all indie games into two categories. Yeah. Influenced by Tim Burton <laughs> and kind of influenced by Tim Burton. This is very influenced by Tim Burton. <sighs> so, but it's gorgeous. Holy crap. Yeah. It does look pretty beautiful. It looks like uh, Yarny, mm. but for someone who likes to cut themselves. Is this... So you, why are you little? Uh, that it's, has yet to be yeah, explained. You're just yeah. like oh, a small spoiler. creature, yeah. and it appears that based off the way the world moves, you're on a ship. Yeah, like a uh, large everything's rocking back tanker and forth. ship. Ugh, frightening. But there's a lot of weird, yeah, weird but twisted it, creatures that come out. It, it it's called little nightmares, and it's like you're a child, and there are these moments where you feel like when you were a kid, and like you'd be in your room at night, and you'd be worried that like something's gonna come out under the bed and grab you, so you'd run and like jump on your bed because you you didn't want mm -hmm. to, you know be accessible like that. Mm -hmm. um, well, there's so there, many points literally in the game where you land yeah. on a mattress and yeah. the character like gets up and yeah, there's always that stuff. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. It's got a lot of really great feelings. So you move to the right and then you move a box once in a while to jump over another box mm -hmm. and Timber then there's box. a twist. All it's right, a, next up an email. Oh, in the no. Corner. Thimbleweed Park. Thimbleweed Park. Oh, which no. I started in was actually a lot more charming than I was expecting. It's really be. charming. I know what this is. Well, it's from yeah, you know the team, is. Ron Gilbert and Gary Winnick. They made Maniac Mansion and a bunch of those classic Adventure games. I have played those. Um, and <laughs> I, uh, I believe you. Yeah, I, I was really enjoying the stories because it has kind of like an X Files, Twin Peaks sort of vibe to it, which is pretty cool. I'd never finished it because I uh, actually found what could be a possible game breaking bug uh -oh. in in mine. Um, full disclosure: they authentic. did not send me any merchandise, or so I would not have disclosed the bug. <laughs> 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 um, but uh, no, uh, it, it's very very charming, like you said. Yeah, yeah, it it because it does like have that long shot establishing Agent Ray and Agent Reyes, and it's like, oh, it's X Files. Yeah. But then as soon as you like check the diaries that they bring, they're both like double agents that pretended yeah. to be an agent because they thought the other person was an agent. Yeah. Sure. So they're both pretending to be FBI agents, and I don't know. It's it's kind of a cool setup. It looks um, just like Mulder and Scully. Sorry. No, Ray and Reyes. Oh. It still has the adventure game tropes of like you're gonna have to piece together these random items that you would never yeah. ever consider piece together it's like you need to get a blood sample from this body so you'd better go to this public restroom and get a piece of toilet paper to get it with and it's like well i would never make that connection that i need to get toilet paper to get this blood sample but okay yeah, i wanted to ask you about that i started on casual i did too oh interesting so even you're still hitting like some pretty kind of weird obscure i think puzzles? there's something in my i can't get something to trigger in my game is the problem Jeez. is it I, funny oh Yes, it's funny. It's charming. It's not laugh out loud funny, but it's like, hmm. oh yeah, yeah like, sort of like, oh, oh, oh. It's it. not as uh, it's not as overbearing because like some of the early '90s, mid '90s point and clicks were pretty like wacky goo goo, like seltzer water type humor. <laughs> this is dialed back a little bit, but there there is still some like very obvious like oh video game logic referential stuff. And I'm like okay, all right, doesn't have to be that blunt, but looks really cool. I'll pass. <laughs> <laughs> the other, yeah, the, I mean, Little Nightmares have kind of had me a little bit. Same with What Remains of Be the Finch, but all right, I guess if we're if we're Bruce, sounds like glowing reviews. What's your indie game of the week? <laughs> uh, my what? My what's game, your of, the game week? of the week? Wait, do I have to pick up those ones? Yeah, you played some Outlast. Uh, Battlegrounds. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, the um, no, I think I I would I would like to give What Remains of Be the Finch a try since I've heard so many good things about I think, it. Yeah. I think it'll grab you pretty quick from well, a lot of a lot of people. It's also. It's not also not a full price game, and it's low impact on your life. Sometimes yeah. there's yeah. like a cost benefit that when you're put up against something like a Far Cry, where you're like sixty dollars, right. and it wants me to spend forty hours on it. Maybe I should just play Edith Finch, which is like what fifteen twenty bucks yeah. or something, and the, it's like three hours, like basically like going to the movies. Yeah. How I, much do you guys get every time you recommend someone to play it? I paid full price. I was going to say, yeah, right. cost us because then sure. other indie games just tweeted her and then she's but like, they, oh, I should buy that one. But they too. have that recommendation <laughs> thing. So you're like, hey, when you buy Edith Finch, just use uh, Code Elise. I got two t shirts <laughs> and that's, and you know that. <laughs> I gave, I got a pin. I gave it to Lauren. That's all to I saw on Twitter. Because right. she thought the game was charming so, uh, as well. Can you take that hat off now? Uh, yeah, yeah, I can. Um, <laughs> I will say, I, a friend I of mine I recommended it to, he's already played it twice. 
He played it once and then he played it with his girlfriend. Wait a minute. So you don't have any friends. Uh, AJ right, Ocasio? Well. <laughs> you know what? If you don't have any friends, you always have your dear sweet mother uh, who you should buy flowers for because this podcast is sponsored by 1-800-Flowers. They make a quality product and they requested we do something a little, a little different for uh, this particular ad integration. So I'm going to uh, read you a selection, <laughs> read you another selection from uh, two gentlemen who didn't have a mother and what that meant to them. Aww. That's right. It's Dean and Sam from Supernatural. Oh, okay. <laughs> so this is a selection from uh, fanfiction.net. <laughs> This is Mother's Day by Princess and the Pea, published on April 17th, 2007. Uh, and we could click over to that beautiful flower shot, please. Let's click on over to that. Whoa. Thank you. I was going to wait till you started. Oh, okay. There it is. Oh, I got you. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Sam ran into the bathroom and took about 10 minutes before running back out into his room. Dean shrugged and turned off the light in the hall. Dean was asleep when he felt the weight next to him. He cracked open his eyes to see what it was while reaching for the knife on his nightstand. He looked down to see a mass of curly brown hair and green eyes staring back at him. Dean was puzzled. Was it morning already? He turned his head away from the sweet angelic face of his little brother to look at the clock. It was one in the morning. What are you doing? Dean finally asked Sam. I couldn't sleep, he whispered. Dean sighed, knowing he wouldn't get any more than that tonight. So he moved over to give Sam more room. He wrapped his arms around his little brother and rested his chin on Sammy's head. Dean softly sung a song to Sammy that their mother used to sing. Even if Sam couldn't remember, it made Dean feel better. And soon Sam was asleep, and so was Dean. Saturday night went by much the same, and Sunday didn't move by fast enough. John had called to say he wouldn't be home till late, which usually meant around 3 in the morning. So Dean got Sam into bed. Sam staying in his own room didn't last long, though. Around midnight, Dean felt Sam crawling around into his bed for the third night in a row. Hell, why did they even bother getting the kids his own room, Dean thought to himself as Sam pressed himself against Dean. Dean felt himself sigh. Sammy, you can't keep doing this. He felt Sam shiver. Please, Dean. Have you been crying? Dean asked, worried. No, he heard Sam sniffle. <laughs> Dean wrapped his arms around Sam. What's wrong, Sammy? Today is Mother's Day. We made cards in the class on Friday. I never got to know Mom, Dean, Sam sobbed. Dean pulled Sam closer to him, wanting to protect him from this, wanting to shield him from the world. Dean placed his chin on Sam's head and snug him, sung himself to sleep again. John walked into Sam's room to find, his go find him gone. Trying not to panic, he walked into Dean's room, only to find Sam and Dean in Dean's bed. <laughs> Dean was hugging Sam close to him, and his chin tucked over Sam's head. Sam was curled around <laughs> Dean's arms. John walked slowly into the room and pulled the blankets up and tucked them in around his boy's shoulders. If only Mary could see them now, John thought as he stared at them sleeping, wishing they could look that innocent and stay this happy forever. Awesome. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> uh, so yes, consider that when thinking about how to treat your mother this Mother's Day. You can treat her right by buying her 24 stunning multicolored roses for only $24, which you just saw in stunning detail. She would love that. She would love that yeah. by going to 1-800-Flowers.com slash soup. Once more, that's 24 stunning multicolored roses for only $24. Please go to 1-800-Flowers.com slash DudeSoup, and the offer ends on Friday. So please hurry. Uh, and can, thank you for the can, sponsorship. Can we cut back to the shot of the flowers real quick? Can you pull out a little bit, zoom out a little bit? I got I got really scared for a minute. Can you zoom out a little bit? <laughs> he was just, they were He's just scrambling. There we go. Yeah. I saw the hands and the feet. And I was like, who is standing behind the flowers? Oh, Like, someone is watching this. It's Aaron. Yeah, and yeah. I realized it was Aaron. Some guy might roof you at a Jimmy party. Jimmy And then I got even more scared. Uh, all right, guys. Uh, it's time for it's time to settle this once and for all. Hard net and oh. all here. Oh, wow. Um, and I was going to wait until the absolute last second to see the winners of last week's episode. Mm -hmm. uh, let, me, let me punch that up right now. So, we recall it was a dead heat between uh, Big Knees and... Um, it was an AI channel. It was AI chick, right? Was yeah. it? Kazuna AI. Yeah, I mean, that's what's been pre-recorded pre for years, so um, I think it might be. Yeah, it is. Okay. AI yeah, Kazuna versus Hard Knees. But I think Adam swung it with his gameplay video. Yeah. Adam mm -hmm. interfered with the election. He did. He did. He's the Putin. <laughs> to the Trump. <sighs> yeah. Well, Adam, good I, job Putin well, in it. We, we did a comment showing a couple other things where we were like, Adam just doesn't get it. It's like, no, I get it. I'm just, <laughs> I'm, I'm disappointed how astonished you guys were there was more to it it's not about being yeah. astonished it's about it was like seeing an electric car and like oh wow they were quite simple it did not require <laughs> gas oh here's the yes problem. they're everywhere it's not that it's Fuck. Like, it's not being impressed by an electric car it's being impressed by what elon musk has done with tesla right that's the difference yeah that's the difference we, the we know electric cars exist the organization the mainstream appeal of it and, and and doing it in the face of adversity. Well, we were right. watching penicillin get made. When also, those, also, other people accurately pointed out, out that the, there's 
there it's not about how you make it it's about how what its impact on the internet yeah. the fact that something like that you saw and said i should try that too no i didn't you did. You That's did. Exactly I didn't what you say. Did. I said I can do this and show you how easy it is. It doesn't matter if the motivation is competitive. But has nothing. To, or it, once again, it has nothing to do with how easy it is. It's just that <laughs> this is easily done, and it's for little babies. Go, ha ha ha. Hard netting's about like Lawrence, being can, true internet. Can we show them this the is big knees? Can we show baby, the, it looks like it's drawn by a baby. Lawrence, but big can we show knees. them the examples is of big knees up? and AI. Just yeah. to re let's go remind to Adam's, our viewers. Let's see Adam's stream. Yeah, let's just remind our viewers what we're talking uh, about. Boy, that's a lot. See how simple Adam made it. But here's You're the thing simple. too. Well, here's so the thing. Does, on your side. Bear reminding because the the votes are in. The winner has been decided. So, because Adam poisoned the well, yeah, ruined it. Large knees came out at fifty-four percent, where okay. AI AI Kazuna he only poisoned measly the well. forty-six. He ruined that. Kazuna, Kazuna, it was a dead by heat the way, for a while there. For the for the record, has a community that translates everything she says into like four different languages. Wow, knees are Can't pure. Can't say that for knees. Knees stopped. The knees posting. are pure. Knees, knees are stopped universal. Posting even knees pictures of knees transcend like eight language. Ago. The AI let's play is too commercial right, because so, he was right. murdered. Can you please check the most recent upload? So, so was it last lover. week or last week or two weeks ago? November 2016. November yeah. 2016. Right. Because he was murdered. They There's really more to this than we realized. We had hard net and ver it was big oh, knee boy. lover, which is this guy yeah. draw drawing big knees These, on character. That's true art as as a fetish. Well. Or something. You know what else is big art? This week's entry, which is combat juggling. Whatever it is, I'm voting I'm against Big Knee Lover. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, about this? Okay, Actually, fine. I'm... Oh, this is pretty cool. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So combat juggling is a 1v1 <laughs> or team sport. Didn't, didn't John send us so this? <laughs> John did send us this. So John, John enlightened me to the world of combat juggling. Got the um, sponsorships. Oh, there's so much talent. So the... <laughs> Oh, that's cool. ESPN. So here's yeah, they're sponsored by ESPN. So let me uh let me run it down for you guys. Let me read you a blurb from the uh the WJF, which is the World Juggling Federation. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh combat juggling integrates the skill of juggling three clubs into a team sport where team members must attack and destroy the opponent's forces, the opponent opposing forces' ability to juggle. <laughs> this is typically swatting at each other. Yeah, it is. Whoa! Combat oh! I don't know what happened. How do you know? How can you tell? <laughs> This is typically accomplished by throwing one of your own clubs up high, allowing enough time to use the other two clubs to attack the airborne clubs oh. of your opponent, then catching your club to resume a three-club juggle. There are a variety of different attack techniques and gameplay formats that allow a multitude of strategies to be developed and implemented. I love Whoa! The, there's, so there's an the age barrier. range here of like eight years old to like 53 50, yeah. in terms of the player base, except they are all white. <laughs> I was going to say, they're all white guys. They're all, all white old guys. white nerds. I'm still unclear on how the scoring works. So I, yeah. I haven't, trying to get to an end zone? So what no, no, no. You, you, throw your, you throw your club in the air. I think I figured it out. You yeah. throw your club in the air, the third one. Yeah. It goes in the air, and then you use the other two clubs to knock clubs out of the other player's hands. Yeah. You have to maintain a three-club juggle. All right. So if any one of your clubs gets knocked away, you lose your juggle. But why are out. they trying to run to either side? I think they're just trying to escape or create room. No, I think you're right. I think they have to score into an end zone. Well, yeah. it looks like. I mean, I read the rules, so fuck me. This is a <laughs> this is a conversation with the refs during the game. Yeah, like, I don't know. Is there uh, a website for this organization? There is indeed. <laughs> and is it still oh, airing on ESPN or was it? I've been staring at that Mantis thumbnail. Is <laughs> and also, if there's a Twitter account or any oh. social media, I'd like to see it. There you oh, go. It's still happening. It's the World Juggling Federation. Okay. Look, Look at the juggling. stands. The crowds have really yeah. come. Oh, 2015. Oh, this stopped two years ago. Well, it didn't juggling stop. Juggling championships. Oh, it was one v ones. All right, so we can figure it out in 1v1 here. I can. Oh, wait. No, that's not 1v1. <laughs> it's not 1v1 at all. This is, in fact, team. Well, based. team counts as one. So why is this guy running? So, yeah. So he, 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 was he throws running. his club in the air and then no. he charges at the other guy with his two clubs and tries to knock him But there was a guy who wasn't running towards anyone. He was I, just running yeah. towards the other side of the ring. Because I think, I mean, if you charge someone see? down, they're not maybe not going to see you coming. That's dodgeball. Hey, none of these are combat. That was footbag. Yeah, footbag's no, pretty good, too. No, don't don't get distracted no, by that. That makes sense. The oh, team one doesn't make sense. Oh, her. Oh, you can catch somebody else's pins. Can you? So as long as you have three. Yeah, you just got. They're holding your, hands. They can't that. do that. That's illegal. Ah, oh, come I like on. Like how it's decided. It's all getting diluted here. I want only combat the juggling. Cameraman was playing. <laughs> was first person juggling. They're all in her. <laughs> all right. Well, this uh, makes sense for the rules you just read, but the team stuff they were doing didn't look like this. Oh. Like they were doing the combat stuff, but there were still players that were actively Ooh. trying to break the lines That's of other players. Maybe it's because they're just trying to get behind, so you can really fuck with people. I just feel Ooh. like I feel like the rules may be different for teams. It's <laughs> just a bunch of people swatting. Yeah. Maybe I feel like even if you win, you still kind of lose. I didn't see anything about oh, oh shit oh shit oh shit oh, oh oh yeah. Also, like how many how many tosses and catches do you have to make after the fact okay. for it to be considered a juggle? So play? I'm really into this because these guys are. This is sort of this is what I like is that 
they're blinded by anything else other than juggling. Like juggling is their life. The art of combat. And they've dedicated themselves to this and then taking it to the next level. Nah. That's, that's, I admire that. I mean, I, I admire this, but I, I would disagree. I think these guys are like, they're, they're real estate agents. They're engineers. They go home and they lead very different lives and nobody really, like but their juggling me. friends knows that this is something they go and they do on every other Wednesday night. Which makes it more pure. And look at how many um, people are in the stands. Oh, wait, there are no I'd love stands. to see more of the website. Oh, there's oh, wait, his parents. There's like people against the wall, yeah. Oh, just knock the guy down. No, you can't do that. That's illegal. Oh, is it? He half the time they miss one of the bins and then they just hit the guy. Oh, they have that sportsmanship. Yeah. It was, oh, Vegas. They their Vegas they're is where, a place where yeah, some of our players where are where from. Vegas. <laughs> oh man, the U.S. always wins. Damn right, wins everything. Every, each should be called the losers bracket. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> Oh, he was trying to bank it off of his shoe. Can you That's do that? Great. That's his boom. Thing. I just saying, he just grabbed it. He as, started juggling again. As a performer, I can uh, I can attest to how complicated juggling actually is. Yeah. So the fact that these guys are doing it like on this level is just it's insanity. Got an Intel yeah. I was gonna say they have it's sponsors. Shoes, That's just hockey, though. Like it's hard to ice skate, but then also hard to hit a puck and check people. Huh. And, I was thinking about how this is like oh. hockey before they started wearing masks because like there's going to be a big injury mm -hmm. in Somebody's the sport. Somebody's going to lose an eye yeah. and then it's going to be big controversy. Some of them are going to start wearing masks. Some of them are going to resist. My favorite thing gonna... about this is that anytime it takes, anytime it requires like more motor skills Maybe. than juggling <laughs> requires, they're completely, they're like at a loss. <laughs> <laughs> like, he'll, like he'll throw it and he'll just like bink off the ground or whatever. When they get to the social interaction portion. Oh, and, oh. The speed oh dating what a segment. fake. Okay. Got him. So wait, so is, got him. is Adam going to tell us he can do this too? I hope so. No, I absolutely cannot. Oh, okay. All right. No, oh. no, no. And, and like I said, it doesn't, it's not about skill level. It's the fact that these guys do it for the pure purity of it. You guys are saying like, oh, it's sponsored. I don't think they're making any money off of this. He's got the it's Intel shirt on. I know, but I think he got that at Goodwill. <laughs> well, then how come you think she's sponsored for Game Cor Indie Game Corner? Because she keeps talking about it. <laughs> Except she just wears a t-shirt. I, uh... I feel like Christopher Guest should make a movie about this. Yeah. Oh, so, so this was this was last last week, but Adam yeah. was copying last week's. Yeah, just for the sake of uh, so influenced by Kazuna. No, I that just, he decided he f had to try it himself. It took five minutes of setup. He just it was turned so himself easy. Compare this to AI Kazuna Kazuna for us. Oh, Lawrence. like you even did like a little. Problem is funny. AI Kazuna is not even <laughs> doesn't work well in the classes, debate by anymore the because. You can turn it to CG Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Oh, how did you get her? Was cute. You did hamburger. I like hamburger. Hamburger and dinosaur. Anyway, you guys need to vote. Don't get distracted by a burger. <laughs> Angry, yeah. like Angry burger. Wait, so Lawrence, show us, show us AI Kazuna. Fry brows. Kazuna. I, I, not up, yeah, Kazuna's not up for voting. Did I just want to see her. Oh, all right. Fine. Yeah, the French fry brows. Wait, this is getting no, really complicated. Did you say French fry brows? Ah, uh, stop it. All right. Here, I'll hundred videos. This is she's way better. Look, this is not Adam. Doesn't do most. Hey, look at the subtitles. Go to closed captioning. You can pick any language you want. <laughs> and you keep saying Adam does this. Adam doesn't do this. <laughs> I just said it. That, I mean, look, these Adam people Adam doesn't have basketball. The, the problem with this, this is not pure. They're not doing look this for the well love. Look at how well animated that is They're, compared to uh, com Because Adam's it's a fucking production studio doing it. <laughs> Sell out. That's the problem. This it's is, not pure. This is one Thai boy this doing this, okay? This Maybe. Awesome. <laughs> Deflate the ball, put it in, and then inflate it. Gotcha, this AI Kazuna. <sighs> anyway. I just, and She's the fact dead. that you guys are like, well, they have a whole community of people doing subtitles. Every Like... That's YouTube. People just do subtitles because they have they're bored. And they got nothing She's better. Dead, to nobody do. voted. You for didn't her. do any of that. Big Knee Lover stopped posting a year ago. Big Knee Lover combat juggling. They got tired of their at knees. Whoops. At least they did it for the love. It wasn't about a business. Can I vote for the Mantis thumbnail? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Jesus Christ! Do you guys all have hard ons for Mantis now? Is that a thing? I mean, did you see that? Jesus. Uh, she was adorable. She, she was, was adorable. Cute. Yeah, was, was I thought she was very funny. I was having a hard time placing her accent. I think they intentionally made yeah. it a yeah. not accent. So right, com guys, combat, combat juggling versus knees. big knee lover. Ugh, boy. James, what's your vote? I need it now. Not invested at all in this week's. Hard I know. Well, I'm gonna abstain. Now that well, Adam, so, you know, like basically he swung the election. So yeah, now, now I feel like this, by, by exposing, I feel like, I feel like there's the <laughs> you ruin the democracy at all. So Bruce, are you abstaining a vote too? Uh, what's going on here? No. Look, ESPN. I'll vote. Sponsorships okay. from I still a real estate agent. I, That's big time. I still think Big Knee Lover is. <laughs> All right. Because combat juggling was obviously oh. shot by cameramen and stuff like that. Whereas Big Knee Lover is, I feel like, much more deep internet, deep web okay. than combat juggling is. All right. I, I disagree with Bruce. The only reason why cameramen are there is because these gentlemen, hopefully there's a woman involved at some point, <laughs> are doing this for the love of it. They were just there. What does this have to do with this? the internet? No, they weren't. They were getting paid. 
I feel like we wouldn't have seen this if it wasn't for the internet. Yeah, right? there's no way that people would find no, it. You just go to the crowd. Tickets terrible. aren't sold out. That's not true. They sponsored by ESPN, and they probably broadcast this stupid shit on ESPN. I mean, ESPN like four or five. Well, whatever. Still, still a television. I mean, they just needed to fill a block. <laughs> That's it. Oh. I'm, I'm voting for juggling. All right. At least I'm still I'm with Bruce on this one. I still think Big Knee Lover is oh, deeper man. into this and than we know. Uh, we haven't seen a post since yeah. November, but I think there's more to that story than we could possibly I would agree. No. Yep. Um I also I mean I would have liked to have seen more about combat juggling, um, more of their website, their social media profiles. So I didn't really have enough information to make of an informed decision. <laughs> oh crap. <laughs> you guys are too busy yelling at Adam. Didn't have enough time to actually research combat juggling. <laughs> that man dropped it. That old man's practicing to be a uh, combat juggler. God, I, I wish I could juggle. This isn't really combat juggling. The one thing I do like about the combat juggling is... Oh, they're hot. Oh, show? no. Oh, well, oh, ooh, ooh, no. Ha. Athletes. Ooh, ooh, ha. It's like... They're there's, psyching there's the team a, out. a team group dynamic with still such an inherent sense of loneliness. That guy's wearing it. checkered shorts. Hero. <laughs> I changed my vote. <laughs> <laughs> so at least you're going big yeah, knees? Yeah, I'm going well? big knees. Oh, damn. Yeah, All right. All right. Well, yes. uh, James? Ooh, I don't that? like any of these. <laughs> Look at how but I, but by not going to the polls, am I worse for the democratic process? <laughs> am I, am I, by, by saying that I choose not to vote, am I hurting the, is there hurting th the whole no, thing? No, there's nothing at is stake. Is there a third party you want to vote for? There's nothing at stake here. Waste so your vote matter. on? Man. Look at how intense those juggles are. So you can vote or not vote. It doesn't matter. I want to vote for Adam's Burger Man. Okay. All right. <laughs> Once again, I'm writing in Burger Man face. All right. I, 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 my, in, my intentions were not pure, by the way. Burger well, Man right in. Uh, Adam's interference has split the vote, meaning the big knee lover wins yet again. Yes. Wow. What a I'm close that tab forever. It is the purest. Damn it. It still down. is the purest, and we all know it. We all know it. Yeah, it's innocent. But Any it's, new comments or donations? Oh, yeah. Well, what did it was up? $58, right? Uh, let's see. I'm back. I think. <laughs> They're just always back. 94. I think it's gone up a little bit. Yeah, donated one week ago. Got a Shirley Watts. There we go. Dropping that 16, whatever see, that is. Please stop donating to this. They're not even <laughs> making new art. They got tired. The big knee lover got tired of big knees. Oh. What's what DA a shame. Hub? What a shame. Hub? DeviantArt Hub. Have you uh, searched big knee lover to see if they come up anywhere else? No. I don't really want to. E stalk anyone. Okay, no problem. Um, I'll do it after I'm the show. I'm realizing now what Hardnetton does. Dr Hardnetton is pulling up the stone to see all the bugs that scatter beneath, mm -hmm. except that they have a world that they've built for them there in the shadows. Mm -hmm. And when you expose mm -hmm. it to the light, all you've done is ruin their world. And you're absolutely right, James. And, and disrupted everything. He wasn't so going to post anything stop anyways. Stop moving the rock. It's it's Schrodinger's net. Cat. Well, it's his rock. net. Yep. Seriously it's a rock. It. So it's a shame. <laughs> well, Big Knee Lover squeaks by yet again. Ants could be alive, they could be dead. Gadget, we don't know Gadget Colt is still the best. The Gadget Colt is awesome. Uh, is I don't pure. know how we let that I still that think that, that old man kissing that, that DJ Def Joe is fine, but he wasn't doing it for the purity of it. No, he was doing it. He was. He loved it. He was posting on YouTube. Yeah, but you know he wanted to do that just because he didn't know how to post it. You also still haven't nominated the guy who photoshopped himself turning into a horse for like 15 pages. Oh, yeah. Well, there's that. There's a guy who turns into Charizard. There's a lot of like. People turning into my favorite was the one guy who turned himself into a maxi pad. Yeah, yeah, but it was See, like over sixteen steps. Like so that's like stuff like that, like Vor, where a dude will animate Vore's himself really getting easy. eaten by like a Pokemon character yeah. and then shed out. Yeah, because that's his fantasy, but he wanted to share it with the world. Is that's perfect. Benjamin Bennett. What? Oh, oh, that was. Uh, can the I kid. change my write-in vote to Benjamin Bennett? Yes, you can. All right. Doesn't Big change the <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks I've for been effectively <laughs> contributed nothing. Yeah, well, thanks yeah. for listening, kind of everyone. Uh, we're already over, so got to wrap this one up. You're over um, this. <laughs> it's going to be back on the set. Everything's nice. Tyrone's back there somewhere. He fell. Hey, guy. Uh, and yeah, so thank you for uh, for tuning in today. Hopefully, the experience was delightful and uh, effervescent. Two ter two verbs that I try to live up to every day. They're adjectives. <laughs> um, so, yeah, thank you again. Please tune in next week. Uh, stay tuned. we got the post show coming up if you're watching live. If not, you can check that out on roosterteeth.com or fun.house, which is a pretty cool URL. And uh, we'll see you next week. And then I heard a literal baby go, My God, Bram Reaper! <laughs> and I was like... <laughs> and that, and the, match real, the match ended real quick. R20. Oh, yeah. Dad. Uh, <laughs> Dad, he killed me.
I play with. I'm a art. I'm arting. 